Hey class, this is Young. This is um, the redo of the recording that I sent you yesterday. Sorry about that. I forgot to maximize my screen when I was doing the recording for you. Um, so again, to get started, today I'm going to show you the basic of SQL or SQL introduction. Okay, but before we can start, I highly recommend it for you to install the Oracle database on your computer as well as the SQL developer tool. The Oracle database, once you've installed it, it simply is just a database. And the reason why I say server is because that database has to live on a physical machine somewhere. Right, that somewhere could be your computer or whatever. And once you boot that database up, you need a tool that so you can use it to access that database and that's what the SQL developer tool is. To start your um, Oracle database, first look for this icon on your laptop or you can go to search bar and just type Oracle database 11 g You should see it. If you click on it, it's going to bring you to this page over here and um, if you see this IP address, that means your database is up and running. This IP address is your local IP address on your computer. Because you install your database on your computer, this is the IP address of your computer. Once you started that, now go and start your SQL Developer Tour. Just go to, I'm sorry, I keep saying SQL Developer, Oracle SQL Developer. Um, just go to the folder where you have installed this Oracle SQL Developer Tour and start it. Once you start it, you should see a screen like what I'm showing here on my screen. Under connection tab, you shouldn't see anything because this is a fresh, brand new installation. Click on the plus sign so you can set up new connection. Over here though, you, you're going to see the host name and it says localhost. Localhost means um, the database was or is installed on the same computer that you are currently logging in or using. The port, that just means this is the port of that database. So on one computer, you see localhost means it only has one IP address, but the different port is what determines which process running on which port. In this case, 1521 port has Oracle database running on it. It's kind of like mm, a house with many doors, right? think of it like that. Host name would be the address of the house, the port would be the door, which door would you use to enter the specific room or whatever. Okay, for connection name, this is just an alias. This is what you can use to name your connection. Over here, you can set, set up any connection name you want to. Um, I can just call it do whatever, or I can just call it young test. Let's just call it young. For username and password, username is gonna be system. Okay, and your password is whatever password you first created when you install Oracle on your computer. If you do test, you should see the status as success over here, okay? Then just simply connect. Now once you connect on the connection, you now see that this little instance and it say young, this is the alias that you give your database earlier. If you expand on it, you're gonna see that it has tables, views, packages, procedure, triggers, a lot of different stuff. What you're most interested in right now for this introduction uh, lecture, it's just a table. When you go to the table, you're going to see a set of default tables that are created by the system itself. Okay. Now, all of these are the default table. So, um, because this is a brand new database that you just created, I would first go ahead and show you what DDL means. DDL. DDL stands for Data Definition Language. What this means is that these are the SQL syntax that you could use in order to control or manipulate the structure of your table. So for a table, you can either create the table, you can drop the table, or you can alter the table. So the three syntax for this would be create, drop, or alter. This is data definition language. You are trying to define the definition or the structure of your table. There is another thing called DMA, which stands for data manipulation language. What this means that is that you are trying to manipulate or modify the data within the structure that you have already defined. 
for data manipulation language you have select syntax you have insert syntax you have delete and you have update okay today I'm going to show you what each of those seven syntax mean so let's first talk about data definition language before you can do anything with the database you must first create the table so let's just go ahead and create table the syntax for it would be create table okay after the syntax you see how it have it highlighted in blue that's mean these are reserved keywords right so that means you, you couldn't really name your table create or name your table table you have to give it some other name I'm just gonna name it database class Okay. After you have your database, open parentheses and close parentheses with a semicolon. Th those are just good practices. Now, as far as the um, uh, standard for the, the, the naming standard, it doesn't really matter if you use uppercase or lowercase. It is case insensitive anyway. Most people would use uppercase though. So let's go ahead and do this database class. Okay and now this means hey I want to create a table called database class and within this parenthesis would be the definition for the column that I would have all the attributes if you recall for your entity diagram database class would be an entity and whatever below database class would be the attribute of that entity now you already have the entity you have to create the attributes for database class let's just Call, um, let's just let's just make it class okay a classic research uh, my class okay now for my class you want to have you want to know what the name of the class is class name whenever you define your attribute you then have to give it the data type for the list of all the available data type in Oracle just go on Google and look for them but class name obviously would be a character or text so you want to use the character data type which is Voltor2 after you have Voltor2 you have to give it the size like how big is this character can be 255 would mean it's going to be the maximum that that column can store right but usually all you really need for class name is really 15 or 20 that's mean it can store up to 20 bytes of data Okay, class name and probably have a uh, school name, right? Class and school, this also gonna be a text field. And for school, I probably give it 40. Then after you have school, um, let's just say um, school year, okay? And school year is a number, right? That's mean you cannot use Vulture because Vulture is only usable for text field. For school name, you want to use a numeric data type in Oracle that would mean number and you can after number it taken two arguments first argument is the total number of uh, digits you can have so I'm just gonna say you can have up to three digits and the second is the number of decimal you're gonna have in this case gonna be zero if this the second value can never be greater than the first value so if you have something like 3, 2, that's mean that school year can have up to 3 digits, but 2 of them are going to be the decimal point value. If you just have 0, that means it can have up to 3 digits, and all 3 of them cannot be the decimal values. Okay? Now, after I have all of these, I can then run the SQL that I just created to make a table. I would just highlight it, then I would click on this green arrow. <coughs> As you can see, if your syntax is all correct, it's going to show you that your table has been created. And if you refresh on this table view, you should see your table in here, my class. There you go, okay? If you click on it, it's gonna show you all the attributes that you have. Now remember for ER diagrams, we have attributes, but when you transform that into the actual database table, they would become columns. So basically, right, you made three attributes. Those are three columns. 
next is the data type of these columns all right so by clicking on it it show you the definition or the structure of the table all three of these don't require an extra values all right so notable is yes okay now you have a table right you have to then insert data into this table but first let me show you the select since you just make a table your select statement will not return any value a select statement is basically saying hey I want to to get back some data from a table that's what the select statement is it's like hey uh, I want to select a mocha frappuccino from the Starbucks store right in regular time that means I want to order a mocha frappuccino but in database time that means you want to select a mocha frappuccino so let's just say select for the select syntax it's gonna be select right and then whatever you want to select then from where all right the table that you want to select from so in this case I want to select from my class so I know I want to select something from this table called my class if you if you're not sure what you want to select for you can only use the wild card in this case gonna be the asterisk Right. In database term, you would read it as select start from my class, or some people read them as select all from my class. This wire call just means just display whatever is currently in my class. And if I'm to run this query, you can see that it's, it, it does show me the table my class, right? Show me that this table has three attributes or three column class name, school name, school year but there is no data right I, I only made the table I haven't inserted anything into this table yet so this table has no data that's why when you run the select it won't show you anything so let's first go to insert for insert syntax the uh, standard for this is insert into you always have to start with insert into now insert into what give it the table that you want to insert the data into I would say my class right insert into my class okay so you want to insert into my class but what exactly do you want to insert into you would then open parentheses within this parentheses you give it all the columns that you want to insert the value to so in this case let's just say just I only want to insert class name right then after I have this I would give it the values in this case I'm just gonna say uh, CYBR something I don't remember <coughs> okay so insert into into what into my class what specifically in table my class do you want to populate a value for I want to populate value just for class name and the actual values I want to populate would be CYBR notice how I put CYBR in a single quote because class name when I first created I created as a text so I have to so that I'm trying to insert text data into um, a column that only accept text when I run this it say that one row inserted and now if I do run select star from my class meaning display everything from my class I should see one row and as you can see one row notice how when I do this it show me one row but the only value in here would be CYPR under class name that is because when I insert I only insert one values into the first row I only want to populate value for class name I did not want to populate value for anything else okay now back to the insert that means if I want to insert more values I just have to specify more columns right so in this case I want to insert class name and school year okay so insert into the table you want to insert you and the actual column you want to populate then values give it the value just say uh, let's just say a uh, requirement and school year would be 2018 okay when I run this and then when I run oh because Oh, see, it say that I cannot insert 2018 into the column school year because I say that school year can only have up to three digits, but this is four digits. 
all right so just let's just say one two three just for the sake of demo purposes now it's a one row inserted right one two three because this is three digit which match with the definition that I have applied to this column now when I select all from my class I'm gonna see all the values okay cyber and requirements uh, let me make sure I'm still recording okay good good okay now <coughs> when you have an insert into statement and then whatever column you define over here over in the value the order of the value have to match with the order of the columns otherwise it won't work in some cases it will work only because the data type for that column is the same as what you are trying to insert even though you try to insert the wrong values so for example now I actually want to insert class name school name and school year okay value now class name what if I, I don't want I'm gonna insert KSU oh it's not a class for school name I want to insert biology for school year is just this now notice this will work even though the content or the data quality is all checked up it still work because KSU is a text character and you're trying to insert a text character into a text column right database isn't smart enough to do the data validation for you yet you're going to learn how to do that later by using trigger but at the moment it is not smart enough yet it's just not hey you're trying to insert this text value into a, a column that accept text and it's going to say hey okay so you actually have the correct data that you're trying to insert it will let this insert go through even though the content is messed up okay see how I say one row inserted now if I select R from my class now it's showing me KSU biology right which I just inserted over here all right now that that's that's how insert statement work okay the order of the column in, in after the table doesn't matter but the order of the values after the reserved word values does matter it has to match with whatever the order of the column is okay okay so from select if you know exactly what you want to display from your table you can give it that attribute or that column name in this case if I only want to want select class name from my class and I run it it's only going to display all the class name that I have in my table okay now but if you want to select more column simply put a comma here then give it the next column okay see here pretty cool right now again the uh, SQL does is, is uh, case insensitive so if, if lastly if I do a uh, school name right I can name it like this don't matter how I name it you see that it still pull, it still fetch back the school name value for me okay class name school year school name now if you don't say you don't want some some column the name is really long if you want to shorten it in your result set simply use a technique called aliases what this means is select class name you're going to do as let's just say c n okay class name if i do this this result set whatever value under class name instead of having this column called class name it's actually going to display this as cn this is only for display purposes it doesn't do anything else but beside display purposes Now you see CN. Similarly, if you want to just change whatever this display, I can just do year. Okay, year. Even though it's so in blue, it will still work. Right. This is because you're trying to name this as an alias, so it's understand. It will only give you a problem if you're trying to use this for the DDL or for the DMLs. Okay. 
cool so that's select and insert okay now I'm gonna show you f some filtering as well if if you don't want to get back every value say your, your table has millions of records and you're only interested in some specific record with some specific values say you're only interested in um, all data with the year of 2013 in this case you would then say where right after you say where you want to give it the value that you want to use to do the filtering in this case I'm going to filter by school year right notice I didn't say year equal right because this is only an alias for display purposes my database won't understand it my, my database still only understand the actual column that's why I have to say school year okay and let's just say I want to display school year 111 only now what what this will do is it will show me the value for class name for school year and for school name from table my class where the value of school year have to be 111 look here now I have three value after I run this it's only return one value because I only have one record where the school year is 111 in my uh, my class table at the moment similarly you see how you can select multiple columns you can also do filter on multiple columns if you want to do that instead of using comma simply use the word and and let's just say school name is let's just say GSU okay this should not return anything because I don't have any GSU record in my table or more like this combination of school year and school name doesn't exist in my table I right, return nothing but if I change this to KSU then I should return something because I do have record that match this filtering combination of school year and school name right see so that how you can use select and insert and also create table alright so let me show you real quick about um, some other DML since we are on the DML right now besides select insert you can also do delete delete mean it will delete the record from the table okay so for delete you yeah, now delete from from where from your table right my class if I am to run this query notice how I don't need any asterisk if I run this query it will delete everything in my class for me I see how I said three row deleted now if I do a select statement just select all the space in does matter okay you gotta give it one space between each of the words if I do this it won't return any value at all why because I just delete everything that I have okay so now I gotta run my insert statement again just just to republish those value and again please do use this tool when you're trying to understand this lecture it helps you tremendously it ha all right practice make better the more effort you put into it the better you will become with SQL and there's no way you know if your SQL syntax is correct or not until you can actually execute it and see the result so this this is highly highly recommended Okay, now say you don't want to delete everything, right? And now you can again use the keyword where, right? Keyword where can only be used with DML because you're trying to alter some specific data in that table structure that you have created, right? You're not going to use where in any of the DDL. DDL again is only used when you want to change the structure of the table, not the data within it so now I want to say delete from my class where school year you know it's just 111 right, if you want to do if you want to further filter this again you can use it, the word and and just give it more value that you want to filter by right if I do this this is only delete one record for me All right zero row deleted oh why zero row deleted I see why okay okay because I don't have any school name with their name KSU All right 
I have school and biology, so this syntax is correct, but because it did not find any data that matched this criteria, it delete nothing. If I change this to, I, I spell biology wrong. <laughs> biology. Uh, if I run this statement again, one row deleted. Now I want to run select all from my class, and I want to see whatever I currently have in my class, right? I only have two rows. Okay, so that's how you do the delete. <coughs> now for the update. Update. After you have the keyword update, you gotta let know what, what you want to update. I want to update my class, right? And then you gotta let it know specifically what you want to update in my class. So update my class, set set what I want to set the school year to be 555. If I simply run this, it's going to set school year to be 555 for every single record I have in this table at the moment. As you can see right now, school year for the first one, CYBR, there's no school year, so it said no. That means there's no value in here. For requirements, school year is one, two, three. After this statement, it will update everything in school year. So when I run it, see how school year become 555? Now, similar to how you can do the filtering on select, delete, you can do the same on update. So set school year, let's just say to 999, okay? Where the class name is CYBR. If I do this, only the first record will be updated. Now select all from my class again. <coughs> I see that. Okay. And again, if you want to further filter this by many many value, simply use the word and. Okay, so and school name uh, it won't do anything because GSU doesn't exist. Nothing should be updated. Zero updated. Okay. Now you can also update many columns at once. To do that though, similarly to your select statement where you can select many columns at once, just using the comma to separate the column, you have to use a comma in this update as well. So I want to set the school year to 99 and the class name to young demo. Okay. And similarly, I'm just going to update where the class name previously CYBR. One row updated. And if I run this, do you see how class name will change to young demo? School year is 9 and 9. Because in in my previous data set, I did have a record where class name is CYBR. That record, two of the col two of the attributes or column in that record was updated to 99 and young demo. 99, young demo. Okay, so that's select, delete, update, and insert. Again, all four of those have to do with manipulating the data in the table. Right, it didn't alter any structure of the table, it simply just manipulated the data. Now we're gonna go to the other two syntax in data definition language, drop and alter. Drop. Drop, and then what you wanna drop? I wanna drop table, uh, my class, okay? The biggest difference between drop and delete is that delete, delete record from the table drop will drop the entire table right so it will erase the entire table and all the record in there once I run this this table my class will no longer exist in my database okay say table my class drop and if I refresh you won't see my class anywhere anymore okay hold on I gotta reflex refreshes here at this level yeah this refresh just refresh your connection not the actual view that you are seeing so now my class will be gone right you don't want to see my class anymore if you do see like all from my class it's going to throw an exception see it say a table or view doesn't exist right 
error it showed you the actual lie that this error happened 21 um, I forgot how to display lie over here I find that out for you okay but this basically the lie number in your um, query editor or SQL editors okay so now because I use the chops notice for any structure altering right there's no where you're not gonna do the where in here you either you alter the structure completely so now let's recreate my class <coughs> okay and insert some data into it okay select from it make sure everything is good all right everything is good okay so now alter as the name indicated alter right alter what you want to alter I want to alter my class okay for job you got to specify job table but for alter it's only alter and then the actual table name so alter my class okay so you want to change my class what do you want to change I want to add more column into it so I would add um, just for example uh, cost of fee okay class fee this gonna be a numeric value so number and now I'm actually gonna have five two that means I can have up to five digits two of them have to be decimal values if I don't provide any decimal value it's automatically gonna do dot zero zero for me so alter what you want to alter I want to alter my class what exactly do you want to alter in my class I want to add a column called class fee and the data type of this column is going to be num numeric it can have up to five digits two of those five digits have to be decimal okay you cannot run an alter statement and add multiple column at once you have to write many multiple alter alter statement in order to add multiple columns one alter can only change one thing okay if I run this now oh, I'm sorry I gotta say alter table sorry class <laughs> there you go table my class alter so for job you need table for alter you also need table okay that was embarrassing <laughs> okay so now if I do select R from my class you're gonna see an additional column called class fee okay it's no right now because I have to insert any values okay if I want to insert into it let's just say I want to insert class name school year right I'm just doing this out of order just to show you the order after the table doesn't matter as long as the value match up to them okay class name something whatever school year 222 two, two. class fee uh let's just say 22 22 I right? four digit that's fine and then school year uh not school year school name KSU okay the reason why I need a semicolon is if you want to run multiple statement by highlighting multiple of them and run them if you don't have the semicolon this C Oracle SQL developer tool will give you an exception because it doesn't know when is the end of the statement that you're trying to run. Okay, one row inserted. Now, if I select R from my class, see how this is the new value that I just inserted. Okay, so that's for alter. Now, for alter, I can also drop a columns if I don't want to add any column, but I want to drop. I see we do author in my class drop column actually I think I just dropped class fee if I do this this column gonna get dropped nah. all right so I actually drop column oh that's right it's gonna be dropped and then the data type of whatever you're trying to drop 
Okay, so the reason why it's asking me to specify, hey, what exactly is class V? Is this a column or is it something else? It's because in the table, as you can see, when you open this view, you can have triggers or you can have constraint on the table. Think of constraint a primary key and foreign key, which I will show you in the next lecture. But when you run the author table when you want a job, you have to specifically specify exactly what exactly are you dropping. Are you dropping a column? Are you dropping a constraint? Are you dropping um, a trigger? Right? For author, you can also do the same thing. Author, table, add column. Usually people only use author uh, table syntax to add column. If you want to create any trigger function, of, they usually write the actual statement called create function or create trigger. If you want to add a constraint, then you would do author table my class add constraint, whatever constraint you want to do. I show you in the next lecture. But again, for this lecture, we go over data definition language and data manipulation language. I highly re again highly recommended you to open this tool and practice um, your SQL. The simplest thing you can do is just try to convert all the ER entities that you have into table format using the SQL to really get used to it. Right? Alright, that's all. Thank you so much for listening. Feel free to email me if you have any questions. Bye-bye.